Videos recorded the day after Trayvon Martin was shot. George Zimmerman walking police step by step through his account of what happened during his fatal encounter with Trayvon Martin. ABC's Pierre Thomas is in Washington and has the latest on this ABC News exclusive. Good morning, Pierre. Hi, Robin. You're about to see for the first time George Zimmerman on camera giving his version of what happened the night he shot Trayvon Martin. In this video shot by investigators just one day after 17-year-old Trayvon Martin's death, George Zimmerman is brought to the scene of the incident to reenact what happened. My head was on the cement and he just kept slamming that slamming. Zimmerman says he fears for his life. It felt like my head was going to explode and I thought I was going to lose consciousness. During the nearly 20-minute reenactment, Zimmerman describes how the fight began, blow by blow, depicting Martin as the aggressor. He said, yo, you got a problem? And I turned around and I said, no, I don't have a problem, man. Where, is and he, where was he at? About? He was about there, but he was walking towards me. Zimmerman tells investigators problem, went, he tries to reach for his cell phone. And he said, you got a problem now. And then he was here and he punched me in the face. I stumbled and I, I fell down and he pushed me down. Somehow he got on top of me. He says he screams for help. He put his hand on his nose, uh, on my nose and his other hand on my mouth. He said, shut up. He later tells investigators he feels Martin is winning the struggle. He says it's at that moment that Martin spots his gun. I feel like he saw it, he looked at it, and he said, you're going to die tonight. And he reached for it, but he reached, like I felt his arm going down to my side, and I grabbed it, and I just grabbed my firearm and I shot him. The lead investigator was apparently skeptical, asking for charges to be filed. Well, the most important judgment is the credibility of the witness, in addition to that, the consistency of the witness's story. Those two things are the things that can lead an investigator down either path of believing that person's story or not believing that story. Prosecutors have been poring over all the tapes, including this one, looking for inconsistencies. They'll make the case Zimmerman has been deceptive, but a jury will have the difficult job of resolving if he truly acted in self-defense.